Uh, so I'm going to be going over how to replace the tumming belts on my 2009 Ducati Monster 696. Uh, it has around 6,500 miles right now and it's a 2009 but, and I don't think they've ever been changed and so rather than risk it I'd rather just uh, go ahead and swap them out and I did buy some OEM Ducati belts uh, since it kind of made sense since it's such a high risk part if they do break um, the OEM parts weren't that much more. Uh, so I'm going to attempt to install them myself. I don't think it should be that difficult. I looked at some guides online and I've done uh, more major repairs on my Audi before. So I don't think it should be too much of a problem. But I'm just going to walk you through everything that I do and then any, any things that I see that you should maybe uh, attempt as well. I know I did see that you might have to loosen the uh, exhaust manifold possibly to get to some of the bolts. But I'll have to see once I get around to it. Um, but anyway. Uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so first up, I'm going to go ahead and remove the, the timing cover bolts, and it's a 5mm. There's So you can just sort of slide the tank out of the way uh, or put it on his chair, but it looks like it should be able to get this cover off now. And then once you have the covers off, you have access to both the vertical and horizontal timing belts. And like I said, I'm pretty sure these are the originals. I bought this bike used last year. I put about a thousand miles on it and there's 6,500 on it now and Ducati says that you should change the belts every 7,500 miles or two years at least on this model. I think they extended it on the on the newer water cooled bikes um, but yeah if these break you're, there's a good chance your valves will hit the pistons and it will cause a lot of engine damage so you're definitely better off replacing these because they're, they're fairly inexpensive considering how much damage could be done if they did break. Um, but yeah, it looks like there's kind of more slack than you might want. I did see that you could put a 5mm hex or allen under to measure the, the tension on the belt. So this is the original belt. So the 5mm fits under there. Uh, let me see if there's a 6mm. So 6mm should fit. And the 6mm does fit pretty easily. So looks like the factory belt is, is kind of loose. So I don't know if that's just because it's, I assume it's just because it's worn. Um, so yeah, that is 
past the, the Ducati spec. And so there is an app you can get from your phone that I'm gonna download. Um, so you can uh, first measure it with an Allen to get it close, and then you can measure the, the frequency uh, through a, an app, which um, like I said, I'm gonna have to download um, just, just to try to get it as close as possible. But I mean, I think the Allen, uh, the Allen or Hex measurement should get you close enough. Cause this one's already out of spec, it looks like. And it, it does run fine. I haven't really encountered any issues, but like I said, I don't wanna risk having a break. Um, so first step uh, is to get the engine at top dead center. Uh, I don't know if that's mandatory, you know, but that's typically what I've done on my, uh, on my Yamaha dirt bike for, for checking the timing. Um, and then the next step is to mark. Um, you can mark the teeth on, on the, uh, the cam sprocket as well as the belt to make it easier uh, for you whenever you replace or add the new belt. You'll be able to easily count the number of teeth on the belt and then also make sure that the, the cam sprocket hasn't moved. So you mark the sprocket, the belt, and then the cover. So you, that's what, that way you can make sure that you get it back in the right position. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Uh, go ahead and mark, mark the horizontal and, and then also first get it at top dead center. And so uh, another thing that, that you're going to have to do is re remove the spark plug so that way you can easily turn over the engine. And I'm planning to uh, adjust or just check the valve clearance as well, I think like I mentioned earlier. So uh, I don't need, need the spark plugs out anywhere just to make it easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Uh, I'm sure you already know how to remove the spark plugs, but yeah, there's one in the vertical, one in the horizontal cylinder. They're pretty easy to get to without removing anything at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So what I ended up doing was loosening the exhaust manifold. There's just uh, two 10 millimeter nuts uh, at the engine exhaust port, and then there's just one uh, one bolt that's for a clamp behind the O2 sensor, and then you can just sort of wiggle it loose. You can't get it all the way out, it looks like, without removing the O2 sensor. So uh, I'm just going to leave that there, but it gives you plenty of room um, to check the tension as well as get to the, the uh, tensioner bolts. And, and like I said, I don't know if it's mandatory to take this off, but it's just going to make things a lot easier and it, it doesn't take very long. Uh, so I ended up just sliding this out and it's just sort of resting on the engine case, so it should be fine. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and get the engine at top dead center. So I just need to find the appropriate marks. There should be a notch on the case right here. And then there's a, and so there's a little circle on, on the pulley here that's actually highlighted, and, and so you just have to line that up. And you can, can also verify it's at top dead center by looking at the um, inside the the exhaust or the uh, the spark plug hole. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to jack up the bike slightly in the rear and turn the tire so I can just get it right at top dead center. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. So I jacked up the rear tire. Uh, just slightly enough uh, so I can turn it and I just put it in first gear so the engine will actually turn over and so by doing that you can easily you can turn over the engine it's a little hard to get started at first but it should spin freely and so like I said uh, there's this yellow dot on the pulley and then there's a notch right here on the case and so you just have to align those and the engine should be at top dead center. Just let me get that lined up. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check the, the spark plug hole and the cylinder just to make sure the piston is at top dead center. It should be, like I said, I'm just gonna double check. So I verified the, the engine is at top dead center. So the horizontal piston will be at top dead center and then the vertical piston uh, 
will not be. So uh, this looks to be correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and and mark the spokes on the on the cam pulley uh, as well as the belt and the and the, the plastic cover behind it just in a few places to make sure I get it back in the right spot. Alright, so now that I have that marked, I'm gonna go ahead and and loosen the the belt tensioner. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it's a six millimeter. So it is on there pretty good. So yeah, it's pretty pretty seized on there. Uh, like I said, I don't think it's ever been removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and and maybe use an impact just to break it loose. Let's see, it might be a little a little rusty. Um, I guess what you could also do is heat it up, but then with this the rubber here, it's probably gonna melt. Yeah, so the heat definitely made it a lot easier to get this off. So you can see the belt is loose now. And so you do have to be careful that you don't remove the marks that you left behind. Because the the can sprocket will turn. So let me see if I can slide this off now. And then what you can do, you can uh, count the number of teeth um, between where you marked and then match that up with the new belt so you can get it on in the exactly the right uh, exactly the right spot. Yeah, I was going to see if there was any date on this belt that would tell you how old it is. It doesn't say. I mean, there's no cracks, but it definitely seemed like it did. It was a little loose. Uh, so, so you can do the same thing with the uh, with the vertical belt. So you definitely want to you want to mark. Mark the cam, the cam sprocket, and then the case. Um, just make sure you can get it back in the right spot. And so the method that I found to set the right tension is to stick a five millimeter Allen key between the the idler and the belt, and then just take a, a six millimeter. Allen key uh, to sort of help you set the tension and then while you're doing that just tighten the bolts slightly so they don't move and then you can go Ahead and pull out the five millimeter, and so the tension should be that you can slide the five millimeter under easily, but not a six millimeter. So you can see you can't even get it through with one hand. Um, this could be a little tighter. On that one, it's pretty easy to slide under, so I might put a little more tension on this. But uh, like I said, you should be able to slide the five millimeter under. But, but not the six millimeter. In the five millimeter, there should be some, a little more tension than this. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and set that. Um, I did try using the phone app, um, but it just wasn't all that accurate. I can show on the, on the vertical cylinder 
uh, the measurements. Um, I was able to get it somewhat close, but the average was still low. Uh, so you really would need an external mic, but even then it's, it's hard to say how accurate that actually is. Um, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put a little more tension on this and then I'll go ahead and do the vertical cylinder. So one of them is, act is called Carbon Drive and it's free to download. Um, this is on Android, but I assume it's available for iOS as well. Um, it was hard to get it accurate reading. I mean, you can kind of tell. It should be between, from what I've read, 99 and 100 hertz. And so, uh, you basically just strum the, the belt to get a reading. But it's, I don't know, it's hard to say how accurate it actually is. And I don't think it needs to be an exact science anyway. Um, as long as it's not too tight or too loose, you should be fine. I mean, you can tell, you know, if it's too tight or too loose and the Allen key method will get you, at least in, in the ballpark. Um, so after you have the tension set, just go ahead and uh, torque these down to the right spec. And after you're doing that, you can go ahead and replace the covers. I did actually, I uh, was actually able to get the manifold uh, header off and the O2 sensor just has a uh, plug and so I just unplugged the O2 sensor and I was able to slide out the the header or for the exhaust uh, to more easily get to the to the bolts and to measure this a little easier and it kind of makes sense to take it off to give you more room it's not that difficult so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together and just give it a test start and make sure it works uh, if you want you can turn over the engine a few times um, just to make sure it, it rotates freely. Um, you can put put it in six gear and it, it turns over pretty easily and so you should be able to tell um, if you did anything wrong. So I'm going to go ahead and put the covers back on and give it a first start.